Okay. okay. Today we're going to be studying the last Go Show, Chapter 8 in Volume 6 of Teachings for Victory by President Ikeda. It's the one-eyed turtle and floating log. Okay. It's a cool Go Show. It's a deep Go Show, actually. Um, it might... Uh, not be completely clearly understood on the front end by some people. So we'll, I'm going to read the Go Show after we've done the lecture separately, like we did. You'll see the from the Sage Nichimyo, I, I did the reading of the whole Go Show. We always read the whole Go Show. This time it's too long again to do in conjunction with the lecture, so we're going to do the lecture only. The lecture starts on page 101 of volume 6. And we're going to just start with the text that's in the gray box because that'll be the primary text of the day that President Kate will be lecturing on. All right. He says, starts out, the one-eyed turtle and the floating log, striving courageously with joy and a sense of mission as lion kings. Okay. Do you understand what, what the sense of mission as a lion king is pertaining to? What does that mean? What's the significance of being a lion king? Never give up. Not only ne yeah. never be up, but yeah. give up. But you are already in your innate state, your original state, king of the jungle. Okay, a lion king doesn't look at any other animal and sub and make and not perceive the reality that it has a, a superior strength, a superior capacity. Okay. And that attitude, that fearlessness has been shown by, uh, that I've shown it in the Go Show many times. You say, this is something that's passed on from the parents of the lion mm -hmm. to the cub, the lion cubs. The lion cubs learn this attitude of fearlessness, this attitude of nothing can stop me, this attitude of I am the king of the jungle. Okay, that's how a Buddha thinks, frankly speaking. Okay, and that's why the analogy is used because they're synonymous with other with one another as it relates to an outlook and a persona of, of behavior. Okay, you have to be fearless in life or you will be defeated by your fear. It's a simple fact because fear diminishes the strength that we innately have within. When we're filled with fear, we are weaker than we would be were we not dealing with that fear. Okay. So part of the entire process of practicing through your life is to become the Lion King. What is the Lion King based on? It's based on the attitude from your own previous personal experience that you cannot be defeated. Yes. That you can go into any battle and not be afraid. That there is no such thing as defeat for you. You are a victor innately, karmically from the original state. You're a bodhisattva of the earth. You're a disciple of the original teacher. You are here for a reason, okay? And you express that reason with your life, who you are, what you do, how you behave. This is all Lion King stuff, okay? With a sense of mission as Lion Kings. In other words, our mission is to be victors in life. Our mission is to express the power of our practice and faith through who we've become as a result of having this practice and faith, okay? So it's not a wannabe club. It's the lion club. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of wannabe lions, mm -hmm. okay? They're just really jackals looking like lions because the first time fear comes, they run. A lion king never runs in fear. A lion king perceives the truth that they have a duty, a responsibility to behave in the way that they do because they keep the order in the jungle. They show the light to the other inhabitants, okay? So, the one-eyed turtle and the floating log, President Kata subtitles, striving courageously. So what's striving courageously? You mean, no you're saying screw fear. No fear, screw fear with joy, because even though that's difficult and actually a little bit scary, okay, to take on fear and to, and to, to, to overcome it is not, not a simple task, okay, but the, we feel happiness in being uh, 
uh, awarded this challenge because it also reflects the merit of our life. That challenge reflects what badasses we actually are. It's not ever punishment. Don't forget when you've gotten to the point that we're at now, it's not punishment anymore. Mm -hmm. It's not bad karma. No, it's the three obstacles and the four devils. And they're doing their best to try and be, keep us from expressing the same life condition as Nietzsche. That's what it all boils down to. Okay, mm -hmm. express the same life state as Nietzsche, and you'll have the same life state as Daisaku Akita, uh, uh, Toda, and Makaguchi as well. You ready? Yes. Yep. Okay, page 101. The peaceful practices, it begins, the pre peaceful practices chapter in the fifth volume of the Lotus Sutra, which would be um, 14, I guess, right? The sutra, Lotus Sutra states, Manju Shri, as for this su Lotus Sutra, Throughout immeasurable numbers of lands, one cannot even hear its, its name. This passage means that we living beings transmigrating through the six paths of the threefold world have been born sometimes in the world of heavenly beings, other times in the world of human beings, still other times in the worlds of hell, hungry spirits, and animals. Thus, we have been born in immeasurable numbers of lands where we have undergone innumerable sufferings and occasionally enjoyed pleasure, but have never once been born in a land where the Lotus Sutra has spread. Or even if we happen to have been born in such a land, we did not chant Namyoho Rengekyo. We never dreamed of chanting it, nor did we ever hear others chant it. And why does he say that? Because I'm the original teacher, he says, and I wasn't there and I don't remember doing that for you. Okay? To illustrate the bottom of page 101, brown bo or the gray box, to illustrate the extreme rarity of encountering this sutra, the does Buddha likened it to the difficulty of a one eyed turtle encountering a floating sandalwood log with a hollow in it. Okay, and if you went to the Go Show, you'd read the whole long two pages worth of uh, recollection of the story. Okay, he's not going to get into that so much here. He's going to skip ahead to page one, uh, 959 and 960 and go pretty much to the end here. I alone, that I shown and continues on page 102, I alone first chanted Nam Yoho Rengekyo in Japan. In the more than 20 years since the summer of the fifth year of the Kincho uh, era, 1253, I alone have been chanting Nam Yoho Rengekyo day and night, morning and evening. Those who chant the Nimbutsu number 10 million. I have no support from anyone authority, in authority, while al the allies of the Nimbutsu have power and are of noble birth. However, when a lion roars, all the other beasts are silenced, and a dog is terrified by a tiger's shadow. When the sun rises in the eastern sky, the light of all the stars fade completely away. Uh, 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 fades completely. The invocation of Amida Buddha's name has entered, uh, has exerted influence where the Lotus Sutra has not spread. But once the invocation of Nam Myoho Rengekyo has been raised, the Nimbutsu will become like a dog cowering before a lion or the light of the uh, stars paling before the sun. The Daimoku and the Nimbutsu are as unlike as a hawk and a pheasant. That is why the four kinds of Buddhists all view me with jealousy and why everyone, both high and low, feels hatred for me. Those who make groundless accusations against me fill the country, and the wicked abound in the land. Therefore, people choose what is inferior and detest what is superior. It is as though one were to assert that a dog is braver than a lion, or that the stars appear brighter than the sun. Thus, my bad reputation as a man of erroneous views has spread far and wide, so that in one way or another, I have been falsely accused, vilified, attacked by swords and staves, and exiled repeatedly. All these persecutions coincide perfectly with the passage in the fifth volume of the Lotus Sutra. For that reason, tears spring to my eyes and joys and joy fills my entire body 
And, he, and he's, of course, starts out by talking about the peaceful practices uh, chapter, but uh, is in the fifth volume. But what he was really referring there was encouraging devotion. Okay? And that's the whole point, understanding those two chapters and how they pertain to the reality of what you're here to do. Second page of uh, the gray box, page 103. Here... I have neither clothing sufficient to cover my body nor provisions enough to survive. I live like Su Wu, who sustained himself by eating snow while he lived among the northern barbarians, or like Po Yi, who subsisted on ferns while living on Mount Shaoyang. Uh, uh, who other than my parents would trouble to visit me in such a place? Were it not for the protection of the three treasures, how could I sustain my life for a single day or even for a moment? I can only marvel that you so frequently send me a messenger, send a messenger to me when we never, when we have never even met. The fourth volume of the Lotus Sutra states that Shakyamuni Buddha will assume the form of an ordinary person in order to make offerings to the votary of Lotus Sutra. Could it be that Shakyamuni Buddha has posed, possessed your body or were your roots of goodness from the past aroused? A woman known as the Dragon King's daughter achieved Buddhahood through faith in the Lotus Sutra. She therefore pledged to protect women who embrace this sutra in the latter age. Could it be that you are related to her? How admirable. And the lecture begins on page 103, first column. Lecture. Nichiren Buddhism. Pardon me. Nichiren Buddhism is a religion of the Lion King. The SGI is the organization striving to, in complete accord with the Buddha's will, spreading the teachings of Nichiren Daishonin with lion-like courage. Every year as we enter the season from April 2nd, the anniversary of my mentor's passing, to May 3rd, the anniversary of my inauguration as third Soka Gakkai president, my heart thrills as I reaffirm my commitment to take action with a standalone spirit as an extension of my mentor. With a standalone spirit as an extension of my mentor. Last paragraph, second column, page 103. Whether in calm or stormy times, May 3rd is for me the day I make a powerful, fresh start with renewed determination as a disciple who is in one in spirit with Mr. Toda on the long journey on, of Kosen Rufu. Mr. Toda is always in my heart. I constantly derive immense courage and wisdom from the life of this great Lion King. Because the mentor triumphs with the courage of a Lion King, the disciple stands up with lion-like courage. Because the mentor takes action with the vigor of a lion king, the disciple also acts with lion-like vigor. Because the mentor speaks out with a fearless lion's roar, the disciple also speaks out with a fearless, fearless lion's roar. When the mentor and disciple are united in their commitment of Kosen Rufu, their lives brim with the life state of Buddhahood of the lion king. Nietzsche and Buddhism enables anyone to become a lion-hearted champion, which leads to the creation of a network of such champions around the world dedicated to the realiz realization of happiness and peace for oneself and others. It is a teaching that empowers each individual to become wise and strong and to act as a protagonist in spreading happiness to others for helping each person become a lion king. And why can Daisaku Akeda say that? Because he learned it through President Makaguchi and President Toto's, Toto's interpretation of the Gosho, where Nichiren Daishonin is shown expressly accomplishing this by living as the Lion King, encouraging Shijo Kingo, be a Lion King. You better never, never disgrace the Gohonzon, okay? Never disgrace the Lotus Sutra. Go up against what a Ikigami brothers, go against your father if that's what it takes in order to support this teaching. You know, 
uh, uh, Nanja Tokimitsu, stand up during the, the, the Atahara persecution. Protect the members as much as you can. You can see it over and over again. What was the source of all the courageous actions of all of those followers? Them emulating the example that their mentor possessed. Okay? As a life state, as a state of actuality, not as an expression of theoretical, doctrinal bullshit. That has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. What's being talked about now is the life condition of Buddha. Okay? Stand up as a Buddha. Quit thinking yourself of any, as anything other than a Buddha. You're not going to get off that lightly. You're way too far into this conversation with me for you guys to not already be thinking that way. If you're not already thinking that way, then you're not listening to anything I'm saying or reading to you. Okay, because that's how I view it. And I view it because of the things that I've read to you and shown you and that I know from my own life because I had mentors that behaved as Lion Kings. I also had the balls, the cojones to go up against the impossible and to actually believe and have faith that it could occur. Never doubt it for a moment. That's the heart of a Lion King. Okay. It's very important to be victorious against the onslaught of the devil of the sixth heaven, the fundamental darkness. Okay? You're not going to make it if you don't have the heart of a Lion King. And that's why he's trying to teach it to you. And that's why he's emphasizing, guys, I don't know if you caught this. This is a really important part of all of this. Okay? So continuing on page 104, uh, first column. The SGI is a gathering of Buddhas. So what's that then say, based on what I just said? What? We are Buddhas. Yeah, but what, what is a Buddha? The same thing as a Lion King. As a Lion King. There's no difference in the attitude or the mission, okay? Or the position within the ranking of living beings, all right? At a Soka Gakkai general meeting held in 1947, when, I mean, first of all, you should have already understood you've already attained Buddhahood. Mm. Okay? And that whatever you think that you don't call yourselves Buddha is bullshit. You just, you missed the point. You've already all qualified to be exactly that. There should be no doubt in your minds that that's who you are. Mm -hmm. And then what does that say? Then you have a responsibility or you're screwed. Mm. Okay? I'm sorry, but it's true. You already crossed the line, all right? You, you can't abandon your responsibility. You took a vow, for God's sake. I didn't have anything to do with it. You're the one that decided to take the vow. I had nothing to do with it. It's your responsibility to uphold it, all right? The SGI is a gathering of Buddhas. We're all gathered. We're all Buddhas. Mm. At a Soka Gakkai general meeting held in 1947, when Japanese society was still in turmoil following the end of World War II, Mr. Toda powerfully declared that our mission is to transform our increasingly troubled and confused society into a realm where true peace and happiness prevail. Okay, now 1947... Huh, how much happiness uh, uh, and, and confusion was prevailing in society as a whole at that time? Does anybody know? How was China doing? How was Japan doing? How was Germany doing? How was France doing? How was the UK doing? Yeah, the United States had won the war, but they had lost hundreds of thousands of their young men. Okay, and there was all kinds of crap going on uh, in terms of governance. What was going on in the background behind the great American democracy was also a challenge to great democracy itself, frankly speaking. There was all kinds of infiltration from people from other countries trying to subvert the government, frankly, at that time period. Big trials on it. I could turn you on to all that. It's very entertaining. It doesn't have anything to do with what we're saying. What I'm saying is that Mr. Toda had the faith to perceive that he was a Lion King and he set about to establish his, his, his disciples as being Lion Kings. That's why Daisaku Akeda can right now talk to you in a lecture about 
make sure that you realize you must become a Lion King. And in regard to faith, that's what Lion King has to do with it. It doesn't mean that you speak with a roar. It doesn't mean that you have big fangs and large claws. It means that you have bravery and conviction that is to the death. You do not begrudge your life. Okay? Okay. <clears throat> he says, this is the quote from President Toda in, in, in 1947. Two great thinkers, Shakyamuni and Nichiren Daishonin, appeared in our world. The first three millennia ago and the second seven centuries ago to loudly proclaim that the only way to alleviate the sufferings of the world, which in 1947, they were very visible, is to spread the quintessential teachings of Buddhism. Okay, I'll say it again. President Toad is saying, two great thinkers, Shakyamuni and Nichiren Daishonin, appeared in our world the first three millennia ago, the second seven centuries ago, to loudly proclaim that the only way to alleviate the sufferings of the world is to spread the quintessential teachings of Buddhism. We of the Soka Gakkai are fortunate to be the organization that follows the teachings of the Buddha. That was President Toda. As he was rebuilding the Soka Gakkai, middle of second uh, column, page 104, as he was rebuilding the Soka Gakkai after World War II, Mr. Toda consistently stressed the import, enormous importance of the organization's mission. He said, because I am a person with the immense fortune of being able to perceive the Buddha within me, I must communicate to the world my powerful conviction that all people can do the same. That since I've become a Lion King, mm -hmm. I must <laughs> convey to everyone that they can as well. Mm -hmm. Okay? I must communicate to the world my powerful conviction that all people can do the same. Mm -hmm. And we must realize that the members of the Soka Gakkai are a gathering of Buddhas. Mm -hmm. We talk about being Bodhisattvas of the earth, but Bodhisattvas of the earth are all Buddhas. Mm -hmm. It's their compassion that makes them manifest in the state of Bodhisattva in the Sahe world, only to then reveal their true identity before the end of their lives. All right? At the time, the Soka Gakkai's membership was quite small. The organization's newspaper and study journal, the Seiko Shimbun and Daibyaku Ringe, had not yet been founded, and there was little or no public awareness of the Soka Gakkai, which had only just embarked upon rebuilding itself. But despite these modest circumstances, Mr. Bo uh, Mr. Toda boldly and courageously declared his wish for the happiness of all people and his determination to alleviate the sufferings of his country, his fellow citizens, and indeed all humanity. Now that is bodacious, man. And, and to construct a Buddha land, a realm of genuine peace and happiness encompassing the entire world. Now one kind of skinny, uh, emaciated, not in good health guy comes out of prison after World War II, had already had an organization that he had not that he had helped support the the development of as the number one sidekick to the original founder Tenesaburo Makaguchi, but that's all been destroyed by World War II now. He's now on his own trying to do all this. So he's standing up against all odds, talking to what? 30, 50, even if there might have been a hundred and whatever ever small place he could be given this speech. And he starts talking about doing something that's going to affect the entire world. Now, again, that's the breadth of the power of each one of you, of each of our lives, is that kind of conviction and that kind of a sense of self that is not limited in what it can do. Now, it, of course it understands, that life state understands you must engage others because to try and do it by yourself will make it something that will seem, make it seem like you're special and other people aren't. 
You have to devote yourself to having your life experience be replicatable for others to follow in your path using the same methodology that you prescribe and that was prescribed to you by your teachers. Okay? And that means a lot of Daimoku too, by the way. This isn't all just from study. you got to get in front of the Gohonza and then chant. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Continuing on page 105. This top first, first, par first line of the first paragraph. This is the life state of a true Lion King. President Kato says of uh, President Toda after what I just said. That's very self-evident. Shakyamuni, Nichiren Daishonin, founding Soka Gakkai president, Tanessa Buromakaguchi, and my mentor, Mr. Tota II, oh. began their great efforts to propagate the law far and wide by standing up alone. As May 3rd of the new era of the worldwide Kos of worldwide Kosenrufu approaches, I hope that all our members will inherit and carry on the standalone spirit of the Lion King with renewed determination. Now, would he tell you to stand up with the, with, to, to, to inherit and carry on the standalone spirit of the Lion King with renewed determination? Were it not available to you? Or were you not capable of being the Lion King? Or if he didn't consider you to already be the Lion King, but maybe the Lion Cub, all right? Not realizing that you're the king yet. So this is his conviction from that moment. This time, we are studying the one-eyed turtle and the floating log. <clears throat> For those of you listening, we have a new puppy that's kind of noisy, and we may have to work through that for a little while yet. This time we are studying, middle of page 105, first column. This time we are studying the one-eyed turtle and the floating log. In it, Nietzsche shares with a follower whom he had not yet met his feelings on being the first to chant the lion's roar of nam myoho and embark on spreading the mystic law, an undertaking that had entailed uh, one fierce struggle after another, that had entailed un an undertaking that had entailed one fierce struggle after another. Okay, so we shouldn't expect less than fierce struggles from time to time. The struggles of the Lion King are driven by a fearless spirit to staunchly confront great persecutions, as well as by the compassionate spirit to value each individual to the highest degree, knowing that you've got to prove it, you've got to show it, you've got to lead them. Let us explore the profound spirit and conviction of the Daishonin expressed in this writing and this conviction should be your own the joy of encountering the lotus sutra on page uh, 105 second column from the gosho the peaceful practices chapter in the fifth volume of the lotus sutra states manjushri as for this lotus sutra throughout immeasurable numbers of lands one cannot even hear its name this passage means that we living beings transmigrating through the six paths of the threefold world have been born sometimes in the world of heavenly beings, other times in the world of human beings, and still other times in the worlds of hell, hungry spirits, pardon me, and animals. Thus we have been born in immeasurable numbers of lands where we have undergone innumerable sufferings and occasionally enjoyed pleasures. But we have never once been born in a land where the Lotus Sutra is spread, or even if, if, if we happen to have been born in such a land, we did not chant nam yo ho kyo We never dreamed of chanting it, nor did we ever hear others chant it. To illustrate the extreme rarity of encountering this sutra, the Buddha likened it to the difficulty of a one-eyed turtle encountering a floating sandalwood log with a hollow in it. From page 957 of WND1. Continuing on page 105 at the bottom after the gosho, after the, 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 the gosho. Nichiren wrote this letter on March 26, 1279, and addressed it to a follower known as only known only as the wife of Matsuno. We have very little information about the Matsuno family, but the lay priest Matsuno, Wakuro Seiman, who resided in Matsuno village in the Ihara district of Suruga province, was the father of the lay nun Ueno, and thus Nanjo Tokimitsu 
Nanjo Tokimitsu's maternal grandma, grandfather. Okay, so this person that this was written to was Nanjo Tokimitsu's grandmother. Okay, his his <clears throat> wife. It is uncertain whether on his mom's side, his grandmother on his mother's side. It is uncertain whether this woman was the wife of the lay priest Matsuno or the wife of his deceased son. The letter seems to suggest that the recipient had not yet met the Daishonin in person, but we can surmise that she had sent him offerings many times and was a sincere follower. A sincere follower. Continuing on page 106, first column. Historically, it was a time of great anxiety and uncertainty for Japan. The country had been racked by a series of natural disasters, including heavy rains and snows and destructive winds. In addition, large numbers had died in severe famines and epidemics. The threat of a second Mongol invasion exacerbated the confusion and unease in society. In addition, the Daishonin followers faced a tense, tense, uh, faced a tense situation with the Asahara persecution already underway in Suruga province. It is against this backdrop that the Daishonin responds to this follower, earnestly seeking Buddhism, and he strives to bolster her conviction in both the law and the person who propagates it. In terms of the law, he states that nam myoho Gekyo is the essential teaching that enables all people to attain Buddhahood. In terms of the person, he tells her that, Having endured and overcome every form of persecution to propagate the mystic law, he is the true votary of the Lotus Sutra. He is the true votary of the Lotus Sutra because he's revealing the true teaching of the Lotus Sutra, which is hidden in the depths of the 16th chapter and can only be revealed by him. That's Namyo Horengekyo. Beginning of the last bit of page 106, first column. The Daishonin then goes on to explain to her that it is no coincidence that she is practicing his teaching at this time. Rather, uh, rather she was born into this world with a profound mission. Now, this is the same message to us, right? Mm -hmm. In that sense, this letter teaches the history of the Daishonin's struggles and his deep conviction while also explaining the mission of his disciples, which happened throughout Mapo, right? They're not just around him in Japan in the 13th century. As a prelude, we're all disciples of Nichiren, right? Okay, so we all have this mission that he's trying to convey to the wife of Matsuno which is the purposes of this Gosho. As a prelude to, des to describing his struggles, he begins by explaining how rare and precious it is to be born as a human being and encounter the Lotus Sutra. We should view our lives this way as well. He further stresses how much rarer it is still to chant nam myoho renge -kyo. And we should know this by, from if no other reason how many people we've tried to teach nam myoho renge -kyo to or tell nam myoho renge -kyo, tell them about nam myoho renge -kyo, and they couldn't seem to get mm -hmm. what had hooked us like a piece of steel mm -hmm. you know so this is karmic mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. karmic it isn't how smart you are mm -hmm. or whose parents you have yeah. all right this is really, are you actually a disciple of Nitra and Daishonin? Because if you are, you'll come in all flavors. Yes. You'll come from great families. You'll come from lesser families. Mm -hmm. Okay? You'll come physically fit and ready to kick ass. You'll come with overcoming ailments as part of your, the karmic reality of, of, of life yes. for yourself. Okay? So I said he stra further stresses how much rarer still it is to chant nam myoho renge -kyo, then to find a, a floating sandalwood log that has the perfect size hollow in it for you to warm your belly and cool your back, okay? He's saying, to make this point, he employs the analogy of a sea turtle encountering a sandalwood log. 
the middle of page 106, the eternally indestructible treasures of the heart. So what does that say? What's that title mean? The eternally indestructible treasures of the heart. The, what are treasures of the heart? Yeah, your faith is what kicks them into gear. They are the experiences of faith that allow you to have mugi washing. Okay, those are the true treasures. It's not the goddamn Cadillac that you got because you got a great job. That's not the treasure of the heart. Okay, treasures of the heart come from being the Buddha in your present form, whether you're recognizing that fact or not. Okay, you've got the teaching right in front of you that's going to bring that home eventually if you never stop. All right, so that's why he can call them eternally indestructible. Why? Because the source of those effects, the source of the cause is from the original state of Namyoho Rengekyo. You are an original disciple of the original teacher if you are a bodhisattva of the earth. Therefore, he doesn't have to worry about whether or not you're really a lion king. If you're really his disciple, you are without question, just by virtue of that, regardless of the circumstance surrounding you. You may have ill health. You may have all kinds of liabilities. That has nothing to do with whether or not you're a Lion King. You're a disciple of Nitrin. You damn right, you're a Lion King. All right? So he continues, in many writings, middle of page 106, middle of second column, in many writings to oppress upon his disciples the profound nature of their mission, which they cannot comprehend with the profundity that it actually exists. All right? Because only a Buddha can understand a Buddha. All right? Their mission is to reveal themselves as Buddhas. If they're not there yet, they're still in the process of that, right? Okay. So they won't even be able to perceive the profundity of who they are until that. When at last one comes to the realization that one is a Buddha, then one is a Buddha. Of the third, you know, okay, you know it from chapter 16. In many writings to impress upon his disciples the profound nature of their mission, Nietzsche and Daishonin describes the significance of encountering the Lotus Sutra in this lifetime and embracing and propagating. Make sure you throw that in there because you're not doing it if you're not propagating it as well as embracing it. Of embracing and propagating nam myoho the title of the Lotus Sutra. For example, in letter to Jakunichibo, he writes, it is extremely rare to be born as a human being. Not only are you endowed with human form, but you have had the rare fortune to encounter Buddhism. Moreover, out of the Buddha's many teachings, you have encountered the Daimoku, or the title of the Lotus Sutra, nam myoho and become its votary. You, Jakunichibo, you've become a votary of nam myoho I am certain at the top of page 107, I am certain that many of our members who read this passage can personally attest to its truth. I'll be one of them. Yes, that's exactly how it goes down. They can affirm that their encounter with Nietzsche and Buddhism has made them the people they are today. And that learning about Nietzsche and Buddhism in the SGI has enabled them to remain true and steadfast in their practice. 50 years. Yes, I can personally tell you. The Daishonin repeatedly stresses important, the importance of this present life. And you know I'm not being arrogant when I'm saying that. I'm saying you must, if I can do it, as we who, can. you can easily do it, okay? If nothing else, listen to me to the last moment. I'll make a path for you. I promise. The Daishonin repeatedly stresses the importance of his, this present life. Buddhism teaches the eternity of life so that we can make the most of this exercise, this present moment, this present moment, which is the only thing that exists in all of existence. In reality, this moment is all that is real. Now, otherwise, it's a memory or it's a potentiality. We're not meant to lead lives of resigned acceptance, fixated on our past karma. <laughs> thinking about the past. Why couldn't I have had rich parents? Why couldn't I have gone to the best school? 
I didn't have a fair start. We all created our start. Mm -hmm. We have no one to look at for the responsibility of our life in totality, other than ourselves. Not even our parents had that much of an influence. We chose them so that they could, we could be born who we are. All right? That I showed in repeatedly stresses the importance of this present life. Buddhism teaches the eternity of life so that we can make the most of this existence, this present moment. We're not meant to lead lives of resigned acceptance, fixated on our past karma, or to ignore the present and think only longingly of the future. The purpose of our Buddhist practice is to enable us to live fully in the present, in this moment. The present, this moment, exists so that we can transform the patterns of karma, of past karma, and enter the loftier tra trajectory of cause and effect based on the mystic law, based on Nam Yoho Rengekyo, based on practice of faith that leads to indestructible happiness. You with me? In a letter to the Shijo Kingo, Nietzsche writes, continuing second, first column 107, it is rare to be born a human being. The number of those endowed with human life is as small as the amount of earth one can place on a fingernail. Life as a human being is hard to sustain, as hard as it is for the dew to remain on the grass. But it is better to live a single day with honor than to live to 120 and die in disgrace, to abandon your faith. That just die in disgrace is to not make it all the way to the last moment of your life. That's dying in disgrace. Okay, there's no greater disgrace than that. We have, let, we have had the rare opportunity, page 107, first column at the bottom, we have had the rare opportunity to be born as a human being. Therefore, every day of our life is truly invaluable. For that reason, the Daishonin teaches us to live each precious day of this limited existence with all our hearts and being, working for others, society, and Buddhism, repaying our debts of gratitude, training, pardon me, gaining the trust and praise of others, and accumulating treasures of the heart, these, these reflections of the effort to be the Buddha in your present form that stay with you for all time, all right? There, is no, there are no greater treasures of the heart than finding, first full paragraph, second column, page 107, than finding answers, this is the truth. There are no greater treasures of the heart than finding answers to the questions of life's purpose and how to best live our lives. Why? Because once we get that element established in our life, we can convey it to others, mm -hmm. just as it was conveyed for us to get it. Mm -hmm. That's not an epiphany. That's from the teaching, okay? That's from your mentor you get that stuff, mm -hmm. all right? There, is, there are no greater treasures of the heart than finding answers to the questions of life's purpose and how to best live our lives, of how to lead a truly fulfilling existence, and moreover, of how to contribute to the happiness of others and the peace and flourishing of society. Such treasures of the heart are everlasting. The treasures of the body and the treasures of the storehouse are... <laughs> It's almost said something else. And the treasures of the storehouse are limited to this lifetime, are limited to this lifetime. But the treasures of the heart, which is the establishment of karma, endure throughout the three existences of past, present, and future. They're based on action. The lions were silencing all other beasts from the Go Show, uh, second column, page 107 at the bottom. I alone first chanted Nam Myoho Rengeko in Japan. In the more than 20 years since the summer of the fifth year of the Kensho era, 1253, I alone have been chanting Nam Myoho Rengeko day and night, morning and evening. Those who chant the Nimbutsu, the practice of the Pure Land School, number 10 million. I have no support from anyone in authority, while the allies of the Nimbutsu have power and are noble uh, and are of noble birth. However, 
When a lion roars, all the other beasts are silenced, and a dog is terrified by a tiger's shadow. When the sun rises in the eastern sky, the light of all the stars fades completely. The invocation of Amida Buddha's name, chanting the Nambutsu, has exerted influence where the Lotus Sutra has not spread. But since the invocation of nam myoho Rengeko has been raised, the Nimbutsu will become like a dog cowering before a lion or the light of the stars paling before the sun. The Daimoku and the Nimbutsu are as unlike as a hawk and a peasant. A pheasant, pardon me, uh, from WND 959. Continuing middle of uh, page 108, first column. The voice carries out the work of the Buddha. To become a person of lion-hearted spirit and to courageously chant nam myoho renge with a powerful lion's roar, to become a person who shines as a sun of hope and illuminates the darkness. Here, the Daishon is communicating the essence of his arduous personal struggle. nam myoho renge the lion's roar issued by the Daishon is the great teaching enabling all people to attain Buddhahood. In the passages preceding this section, Nietzsche relates in detail the analogy of the one-eyed turtle, noting how even after encountering the sandalwood log, the turtle mistakes its location and swims in the wrong direction, unable to place its belly in a hollow in the log. He writes, and even if the turtle should come across a floating sandalwood log, finding one with a suitable hollow is difficult. This means that even if one should encounter the Lotus Sutra, it is difficult to chant the five characters of nam myo ho that are his, his, uh, that are its essence. And did you note what he said there? He said the five characters of nam myo ho And there are seven characters in nam myo ho He's just qualifying five or seven characters are the Daimoku. We don't chant Myoho Rengekyo, we chant Nam Myoho Rengekyo, but as we speak of it, we can say it either way. Because that's not the same as when we're really invoking it. Page 109, in other words, pardon me, 108 second column. In other words, even if people of the latter day encounter the Lotus Sutra, unless they know how to bring forth the state of Buddhahood, lying dormant within their own lives through chanting nam myoho renge the essence of the Lotus Sutra, it will, produce, it will produce nothing of real value. Because if you read the Lotus Sutra without the, 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 without the foundation of the Daishonin's teaching, it's really a lot of old, uh, mystic, confusing, weird stuff. To be honest, I mean, it's a treasure tower being bigger than a third the size of the earth. I mean, stuff like that. How do you square all that? If you don't understand the analogies that are created along the line and the clarity that's created along the line from the time it was expounded and translated by Kumarajiva through uh, uh, Nanye and Tentai and Chang'an and Miolo and Dengyo. All of those guys added the understanding that the Daishonin is, is expressing here. Do understand that. He's not making all this up in any way, shape, or form. <clears throat> In other words, even if people of the latter day encounter the Lotus Sutra, unless they know how to bring forth the state of Buddhahood lying dormant within their own lives through chanting nam myoho renge the essence of the Lotus Sutra, it will produce nothing of real value. In fact, they will most likely drift away from the supremely precious sandalwood log and instead choose some other log floating in the sea because they're just getting mind candy out of it. They're not getting actual empowerment. The defining characteristic of the latter day, <clears throat> the evil age after the Buddha's passing, is that people have lost an understanding of the Lotus Sutra's true worth. People's lives are polluted by the three poisons of greed, anger, and foolishness. What appears to be wisdom actually functions as a hindrance, making people mistake the superior as inferior and the inferior as superior which in turn leads to their alienation from the Lotus Sutra. Moreover, misguided and ill-intentioned priests activating as negative influences or bad friends will join in denouncing the Lotus Sutra. This causes the pre-Lotus Sutra teachings expounded as expedient means to be widely accepted. 
The Daishonin appeared at such a time when the correct teaching of Buddhism was on the verge of perishing and slander of the law prevailed throughout the land. Top of page 109. The essential law for universal enlightenment. The Daishonin revealed and began to chant Namyoho Rengekyo, the essence of the Lotus Sutra, and the essential law for the enlightenment of all Buddhists throughout the ten directions and three uh, ex existences. This was actually a struggle to awaken the people of Japan who had been deceived by evil causes. To put it another way, he decided to stand up as a single lone individual and address all the people in Japan not yet awakened to the truth. This is indicated by his words, I alone have been chanting nam myoho renge while those who chant the Nembusu number 10 million. When he says he has no support from anyone in authority, he means that he has no such support of any kind, including financial. Those who have power and are of noble birth refer to those who do enjoy such support or are themselves high-ranking nobles or samurai. For many centuries in Japan, Buddhist leaders were members of the aristocracy and came from wealthy families, but Nichiren lacked any such social backing or support, as his assertion that he was from a Chandala family attests. A Chandala family uh, uh, attests. Even, yet even in such circumstances, he declares, he has continued to roar out nam myoho renge -kyo. When a lion roars, all the other beasts are silenced, and a dog is terrified by a tiger's shadow. When the sun rises in the eastern sky, the light of all the stars fade completely. This is a passage, top of page 109, second column. This is a passage that we have all read many times and taken deeply to heart. All other beasts, those who slander the Lotus Sutra, are silenced by the Buddha's mighty lion's roar. When the son of Nichiren and Buddhism appears, the starlight of the provisional pre-Lotus Sutra teachings vanishes. In the same vein, Nichiren states in another writing, with the appearance of this teaching, nam myoho renge -kyo, all the teachings advocated by the scholars and teachers of Buddhism during the former and middle days of the law will be like stars after sunrise or an awkward apprentice beside a skilled craftsman. From page uh, 896 of WND1. Commenting on this passage, Mr. Makaguchi said, with this, the mystic law of enlightenment, the supreme law of life sought for, universe, sought for universally by people throughout the world became readily accessible to anyone. There is no greater religious revolution. The teachings of the other Buddhist schools of the Daishonin's day, which slandered the Lotus Sutra, were indeed like uh, starlight. Were like starlight after sunrise. Though they might praise various Buddhas and teach the Buddha's enlightenment, they are worthless because they have no relevance to people attaining Buddhahood in the latter day. Top of page one ten. The restoration of Buddhism for the sake of the people. The true enlightenment of Buddhas is to see the supremely noble potential they discern within themselves, potential as vast and infinite as the universe, as also existing equally in the lives of all people. The true behavior of a Buddha is to try and draw out that potential from everyone. In other words, those who continue striving to help everyone attain Buddhahood are genuine Buddhas. If that all-important principle is overlooked, then however people may revere a Buddha, doing so will amount to entreating the Buddha as a supernatural power, as something separate from ourselves, turning Buddhism into no more than a form of begging or making wishes. In the Daishonin's day, Buddhism, originally a teaching of the supreme dignity of all people, had degenerated into a religion that demeaned and devalued people. The Daishonin fought against such slander of the law, which arose from the established Buddhist school's erroneous doctrines. Buddhism began as a humanistic religious teaching. Uh, uh, pardon me. Hum uh, Buddhism began as a humanistic religion, teaching that all people are Buddhas and that everyone is worthy of supreme respect. It did not teach that there is a higher realm of religion existing somewhere else separate from us. Instead, it insisted that the law resides within us. 
The ultimate expression of that principle is to be found within the Lotus Sutra. Moreover, the Buddhism for the people taught by Nietzsche and Daishonin sets forth the way by which all people can manifest the unsurpassed state of Buddhahood in their own lives, just as they are. Top of page 110, second column. Indeed, Nietzsche and Buddhism is the lion's roar that upholds human dignity, silencing the multitude of beasts that would deny, that would denigrate human dignity. It is the sun that illuminates the darkness of ignorance shrouding human potential. The Daishonin established a teaching, a teaching open and accessible to all people in the latter day of the law. That's why it's been able to be spread throughout the world by the Soka Gakkai. His towering conviction shines brightly in his declaration. Once the invocation of Namyoho Rengekyo has been raised, the Nimbutsu will become like a dog cowering before a lion or the light of the stars paling before the sun. Middle of page 110, going back to the Gosho. Battling attacks by arrogant people. <clears throat> the Gosho. That is why the four kinds of Buddhists, monks, nuns, laymen, and laywomen, all view me with jealousy and why everyone, both high and low, feel hatred for me. Those who make groundless accusations against me fill the country and the wicked abound in the land. Therefore, people choose what is inferior and detest what is superior. It is as though one were to assert that a dog is braver than a lion or that the stars appear brighter than the sun. Thus, my bad reputation as a man of, er of erroneous views has spread far and wide so that in one way or another, I have been falsely accused, vilified, attacked by swords and staves and exiled repeatedly. All these persecutions coincide perfectly with the passage in the fifth volume of the Lotus Sutra, the encouraging devotion, not the peaceful practices. For that reason, tears spring to my eyes and joy fills my entire body because my faith tells me that I'm on the right track, I'm doing the right thing, and it's for the sake of others as I'm, I'm supposed to be motivated. This section, page 111, first column, this section describes how arrogant people envied, hated, and persecuted Nietzsche and who had revealed with such perfect clarity the way for all people to attain Buddhahood. Not just the good ones, by the way. The only recourse for those, these people who he says lack the wisdom to refute his arguments, pardon me, the only recourse for these people who he says lack the wisdom to refute his arguments was to spread lies and false accus accusations to discredit him. He was by no means exaggerating when he writes in this letter, those who make groundless accus accusations against me fill the country and the wicked abound in the land. Therefore, people choose what is inferior and detest what is superior. Throughout his life, the Daishonin engaged in a struggle of words to clarify the correct teaching of Buddhism. But even people as close to him as Sirenbo <coughs> turned their back on him, renounced their faith. Throughout his life, the Daishonin, the, and the Daishonin engaged in a struggle of words to clarify the correct teaching of Buddhism, Namyoho Rengekyo, the Buddhism of sowing. In contrast, his opponents relied on defamation and violence, ultimately empl employing false accusations and slander to incite the authorities to move against him, although he was completely innocent of any wrongdoing. In this letter, he writes that he had gained a bad reputation as a man of erroneous views and been falsely accused, vilified, attacked by swords and staves in exile. These are all per persecutions perfectly matching those that the Lotus Sutra predicts will be fall practitioners of the Lotus Sutra in the e evil age after his passing, after the thus come one's passing. The fifth volume of the Lotus Sutra contains chapters 12 through 15, beginning with the Devadatta chapter and ending with the emerging from the earth chapter. In particular, chapter 13, encouraging devotion, concludes with the verse section in which the Buddha describes the persecution that, pra uh, that practitioners will face in the latter day. Sutra passages that the Daishonin alone had read with his own life, the 20 verse, the 20 line verse. We've already, we just read it two Goshos ago or something recently. 
Propagating the correct teaching in a corrupt and evil age is a battle against the forces of arrogance. But just like Bodhisattva never disparaging, who in the Lotus Sutra shows the utmost respect for everyone he encountered, for everyone he encountered, the Daishonin persisted in his efforts for dialogue, even under these harsh conditions. Through the power of words, he refuted the grave error of destroying the correct teaching. His actions were solely and entirely motivated by his wish for people's happiness. In fact, while in exile on Sado Island, he even declared his desire to lead his persecutors to enlightenment. The Daishonin remained firmly committed to his vow to be the pillar of Japan, reading the Lotus Sutra with his life and reviving the Buddha's intent to help all people attain Buddhahood. Thus, he tells the wife of Matsuno how he has engaged in his struggles with a spirit of immense joy, writing, For that reason, tears spring into my eyes, surely. For that reason, tears spring to my eyes and joy fills my entire body, which is where the tears are really coming from. They're not tears of unhappiness, of a hardship. They're of immense gratitude and can't believe you could understand what you understand or that you must have the mission that you must then therefore have. Whoa. <laughs> For that reason, tears spring to my eyes and joy fills my entire body. This was the Daishonin state of life, even as he faced one onslaught of persecution after another because he's a badass. Yes. Both Mr. Makaguchi and Mr. Tota also underwent persecution and dedicated their lives to propagating the mystic law in, the, in exactly the, uh, the same spirit as the Daishonin. Do not begrudge your life. Let's, let us advance with pride as disciples in the direct lineage of, those, of these champions of Kosen Rufu from Nichiren on through the first three founding presidents. Let us advance with pride as disciples in the direct lineage of these champions of Kosen Rufu, striving boldly, speaking out courageously with a lion's roar for truth and justice and adorning our lives with triumph. This is why I got to say what I was just talking about off camera before we started. It's time. Continuing page 112, we're almost done. Yep. Dialogue about Buddhism leads to inner transformation for ourselves and others. What did that just say? What? Dialogue about Buddhism leads to inner transformation. Shakabuku, because I'm doing shakabuku here, whether you understand that's what I'm doing or not. Mm -hmm. Okay? Shakabuku leads to inner transformation, going from a common mortal to an enlightened one, mm -hmm. for ourselves and others. Okay? For everybody. Mm -hmm. Universal enlightenment. That's the whole deal, guys. That's why it's worth a shit. You know, that's why it's not like any other religion. All right. Mr. Tota said, the more a lion cub, page 112, the more a lion club is beaten down, <laughs> the stronger it becomes. The harder it is struck down, the more fiercely it rises up again. In the end, it grows to become a mighty lion king whose roar resounds far and wide. The Soka Gakai is a lion's cub. Because our dialogues to share Buddhism aim to help others achieve an inner transformation, do human revolution, a noble endeavor to bring forth the Buddha nature inherent within each individual, it can be extremely arduous. It is also part of our Buddhist practice to vanquish the fundamental ignorance in human beings. That's fundamental darkness. That's Kosen Rufu, which stops them from fully believing in the worth and dignity of their own lives. That's why there's no need to rush. Sowing the seeds of the mystic law is in itself an act that, en that endows our lives with immeasurable good fortune and unsurpassed benefit. The important thing is to persevere sincerely and patiently. And don't worry, you will be back for more. 
We must keep striving with the heart of the Lion King and stand up with the absolute conviction because you're not reflecting just this moment, this lifetime's moment in, in this single moment of life, okay? You're also expressing the original state because you're a bodhisattva of the earth. When we share our own feelings and experiences in faith, based on that foundation and speak with confidence and sincerity, with genuine care and concern for the other person, the Buddha nature of that person will be activated. Our own Buddha nature will become the cause that draws forth the Buddha nature of others. The seeds of Buddhahood sprout through causation, the Lotus Sutra says, as the Lotus Sutra states. Mr. Toda said that we should share Buddhism with others gently. Gentleness is different, of course, from weakness. Speak calmly, confidently, and clearly. That is on its own. That on its own is an outstanding way to talk about Buddhism. Because you're a badass lion king. You don't fear anything when you talk to other people. You're not afraid somebody's going to beat you in debate or understand more than you do. That's impossible, all right? Or have a, a, a more correct perception and understanding. It's impossible. So you can have the spirit of the Lion King, the spirit of being an indomitable force in nature. Simply by your own shining example of embodying Nietzsche's teachings, you can be an extension of the mentor. You can sow the seeds of Buddhism in others' hearts. Sow the seeds. Compassion is the foundation of sharing Buddhism. This is also something Mr. Toda said. The Daishonin's persuasiveness is not just ordinary persuasiveness. It is persuasiveness deriving from compassion. That's what makes it so great. We cannot hope to compare with the Daishonin, but let's strive with persistence and use logical arguments to convince others. We can substitute courage for compassion that was also Mr. Toda's keen observation. When we rouse our courage to draw forth the heart of the Lion King from within ourselves, when we gather the confidence to share this Buddhism with other people and not back down when they're not listening, to persevere in trying to make the point that will touch their lives and ignite the fuse, Okay, that's what that is. When we rouse our courage to draw forth the heart of the Lion King from within ourselves and speak out confidently, we can awaken the heart of the Lion King within others. Are you not copping a buzz from how I'm talking? I'm disappointed if you aren't. You're not listening to what I'm saying then, okay? Treasuring each individual, he goes on to page 113. Here at Minobu from the Gosho, I have neither clothing sufficient to cover my body nor provisions enough to survive. I live like Su Wu, who sustained himself by eating snow while he lived among the northern barbarians, or like Po Yi, who subsisted on ferns while living on, on Mount Xiaoyang. Who other than my parents would trouble to visit me in such a place? Were it not for the protection of the three treasures, the Buddha, the law, and the Buddhist order, how could I sustain my life for a single day or even for a moment? I can only marvel that you so frequently send a messenger to me when we have never even met. The fourth volume of the Lotus Sutra states, the Shakyamuni Buddha will assume the form of an ordinary person in order to make offerings to the votary of the Lotus Sutra. That's from the Teacher of the Law chapter. Could it be that Shakyamuni Buddha has possessed your body or were your roots of goodness from the past, uh, from the past aroused? A woman known as the Dragon King's daughter achieved Buddhahood through faith in the Lotus Sutra. She therefore pledged to protect women who embraced this sutra in the latter age. Could it be that you are related to her? How admirable. Bottom of page 113. After writing about his great struggle and his compassion, the Daishonin goes on to offer the wife of Matsuno extremely detailed encouragement. Each of his writings brims with humanism, evident in the way he strives to offer the greatest possible encouragement to each person he addresses. 
In this letter, he writes first of his shortages of food and clothing, expressing his profound gratitude for the offerings of his followers. The wife of Matsuno, though she has sent the Daishonin offerings numerous times, has, has never met him in person. There must have been many other followers whose names are not recorded in his extant writings who never met him. Mm -hmm. This was probably also true of the three martyrs of Atsuhara who may remain true to their faith at the cost of their lives. Mm -hmm. Faith isn't measured by physical proximity, but by one's heart or spirit. Nietzsche could clearly conceive this woman, perceive this woman's sincerity. Referring to the teacher of the law chapter, he writes, I can only mar marvel that you so frequently send a messenger to me. Could it be that Shakyamuni Buddha has possessed your body or were uh, your roots of goodness from the past aroused? Mr. Makaguchi heavily underlined this passage in his copy of Nichiren's writings. The Daishonin then praises his follower, mentioning the Dragon King's daughter. And asking, could it be that you are related to her? The enlightenment of the Dragon King's daughter was a guarantee of the happiness of all women for the eternal future of the latter day of the law. Just as the example of a single disciple of the Daishonin standing up serves as a model for countless people in future generations. In a letter addressed to the wives of the Ikigami brothers, Nichiren writes, Will you follow the path of the Dragon King's daughter and become a model for women attaining Buddhahood in the evil latter age? And he exclaims, Could there ever be a more wonderful story than your own that will be announced by future generations as we read about it in the Go Show, for gosh sakes? The story of an individual's experience becomes an example for Kosan Rufu, Far into the distant future, we're still reading about what President Makaguchi did, what President Toda did. Mm -hmm. Believe me, there were other followers that preceded them. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Those who stand up based on the mystic law are all emissaries of the Buddha, sent by the Buddha to carry out the Buddha's work. They're an extension of the Buddha. They are Buddhas. From another perspective, they are the bodhisattvas of the earth from time without beginning. They possess the law of the original state. <laughs> Continuing page 114, sec, first column. Each individual is blessed with great good fortune from past existences. Each individual is blessed with great good fortune from past experience, existences. The Daishonin always emphasized the workings of past karma and karmic connections in one's life. The Lotus Sutra 2 says in regard to the analogy of the one-eyed turtle that one encounters Buddhism because one is blessed with great good fortune from past existences. In terms of our lives, this means that those who have awakened to their own Buddhahood, those who have awakened to their own Buddhahood and have joined the effort for Kosan Rufu all possess the same compassion, compassionate spirit of the Buddha and are carrying out the mission of the Bodhisattvas of the earth. Let me say it again. It's up to each one of us to come to this conclusion. It's a very personal one because it doesn't matter if anybody else believes it or sees it. Mm -hmm. It's between you and the Gohonza. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> The Lotus Sutra, too, says in regard to the analogy of the one-eyed turtle, that one encounters Buddhism because one is blessed with great good fortune from past existences. In terms of our lives, this means that those who have awakened to their own Buddhahood and have joined the effort for Kosan Rufu all possess the same compassionate spirit of the Buddha and are carrying out the mission of the Bodhisattvas of the earth. So no one should be able to make you feel bad for whatever you're doing. Everyone is a treasured being worthy of respect. I didn't hear him say there were exceptions there. Everyone is a treasured being worthy of respect. Regardless of who sits at this table, if they sit at this table, they're worthy of respect in my book. Nichiren Daishonin is a teaching, Nichiren Buddhism is a teaching for each individual to realize the true dignity and worth of human existence. It is the mission of the SGI, one decreed by the Buddha, to spread this humanistic Buddhism around the world today. Yeah. In closing, I would like to return to Mr. Toda's remarks 
at the general meeting back in night in that at that general meeting back in 1947 while rejoicing at the enormous good fortune of being able to perceive the Buddha, and he's saying, quoting Mr. Tota, mm. while rejoicing at the enormous good fortune of being able to perceive the Buddha in our insignificant mortal form, mm. we need to share this joy with others and purify the land into a Buddha realm. This is only natural. This natural action is what makes us emissaries of the Buddha. This is what our job is. This is why we manifest in this Sahe world. Wrapping the source of enlightenment in a bundle of compassion and presenting it to others is what we call Shakabuku, or sharing Nichiren Buddhism with others. Shakabuku is the mission of the Soka Gakkai and its credo. And that's why I said what I said a minute ago. That is Shakabuku. That's what I'm doing right now, even though I don't have to convince you all. The spirit of my mentor still remains alive in my heart to this day. Let us live out our lives of mission together with a feeling of true exhilaration and enjoyment. With profound gratitude for your spirited, lion-hearted endeavors to engage in dialogue day after day. President Daisaku Ikeda. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.